Today I wanted to do a short video on one of my favorite, I almost want to call it a MIDI controller, but it's not a MIDI controller at all, yet uh, it behaves the same way. You can see this picture of this big, beautiful knob on the screen, and of course mine right here on my desktop. And if you're not familiar with this, what this controller does is it actually takes control of the pointer uh, for your mouse. So basically anything that you hover over in your DAW, uh, like for instance, this gain here, you just put the cursor over that and you just use the knob to um, move it up and down. And this, this knob is, is really large and it's super smooth and super high resolution, which just makes it so nice for uh, doing big rapid movements, but also very fine adjustments and it's cool because it works you know with any plugin you just open it up and whatever you have it hovered over you can use it you can use it on vertical um, faders if you're in ableton here and you want to do it here you can do it there these two settings here that you see on the left and on the right hand side is for vertical and then for horizontal sliders you flick it the other way now, we'll come back to what this other knob is here. But what I really wanted to show in this video today is a couple maybe less conventional uses for it. Um, the first one is, is if you have something like an audio track, and a lot of people that are Ableton users know that within this um, warping window here, there's certain things that you cannot assign to your Ableton push or even MIDI controllers. One I use a lot is this um, transient adjustment here uh, that you'll see that shows 100. You cannot control this or assign it to a MIDI controller, but of course you can hover our knob over it and you can see that as I'm turning it, I'm able to adjust that. So it's for these kind of things, it's just invaluable for me. But let me show you my other three favorite things that I like. One is I like to get off the grid when I'm programming. So we got a, just a super simple house beat here. And these, let's do it with the hats because that's what creates a lot of our grooves. So I just got this super easy upbeat eighth hat. Now, if I flip it to the horizontal mode and if I have it down here, I need this button down on this one. If I, if I and then it allows me to nudge the note around which creates like little micro timings. What I like to do is once I've had it, my whole hat line programmed is select all of them, zoom in so that I can get finer resolution and then hover my mouse over one of them. And then I can slide the whole pattern forward and backward in time to create micro timing. And in order to do this, you do have to have uh, your fixed grid turned off. Otherwise it's gonna snap to whatever uh, resolution that you have set to. That's also uh, command four on the Mac, turns on and off your grid. So turning off your grid and being able to slide individual notes or the whole thing if you select all, that's that's my first uh, favorite thing to do. And my other favorite thing that is nice is to control velocities with it. You can see I've already got some programmed alternating velocities here, but we can either you know select all and we hover our mouse over it and if we have this selected to the vertical, then we can, um, or sorry, not vertical, the horizontal, um, and we can bring that up and down like that with super fine precision, or obviously even just one note, we can have super fine control over this. And you can probably, if you have an imagination, probably see where I'm going next, and that is uh, automation lanes. Um, let's go over to our kick pattern and you can, if I throw like an auto filter on this kick, obviously, you know, I can um, record automation like I was mentioning earlier. So that's, that's cool. I love having that big knob. It just gives you, it's hard to explain unless you actually have your hand on it, how, how much control you have. Not, like I said, not only over fine adjustments, but over micro adjustments. But what's really neat is 
one, we have the grid on here. So if I put it over a, a point and I have it on the uh, vertical, I can adjust my each one of these little points with the knob up and down. And if I flip the switch left and right along the grid, but really what's neat is just like in the, in the last example is if I turn the grid off, then now when I have this, I, I can really, depending on how far I have it zoomed in, I can really tweak these with super fine precision. If you've ever tried to move it with a mouse, like say we're trying to do the frequency, you know, to try to get, you know, these very small movements with the mouse, even with a nice trackpad, uh, can be very difficult. So if you, you look at this and when you look these up, you're going to be shocked at how expensive this is. But I'll tell you right now, I have a lot of controllers and I've used a lot of MIDI controllers in my time. I have the Ableton push, um, have the console one and I, and I've had a lot of other MIDI controllers, the Behringer X touch. But if I could, if I, if it was desert Island and I could only have one item, it would be the knob the NOB um, just because instantly I put my mouse over anything and I have control over it right away and the feel of the thing is just it's incredible so check out the link um, a link to the manufacturer below and also maybe a couple of their videos so you can see it in action obviously this works with any DAW it works with any software of any kind video editing anything so uh, check it out if you have any questions or comments, please leave that in the notes below and I'll be sure to reply back. And if you could do me a huge favor and hit the like and subscribe button, that does the channel a big solid. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.